So as I've mentioned before, viruses are not capable of self-replication. So they actually have to depend on our host cells in order to do that. So when we talk about being infected by a virus, what I mean by that is that the virus is actually going to click onto the receptors on the cell and inject its genome into the cell. That's how it's actually going to infect it. So the reason I say that is because let's say that I have a cold and I'm hanging out with my dog and I sneeze and cough all over her. The viruses that are coming out of me might actually get into her system, but they're not going to be able to attach to any of her receptors to make her actually get the cold or the flu or whatever it is I have. So she's not infected if they're floating around until they can actually connect to the cell. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so basically what happens is it's going to inject its genome into the cell and then it's going to start programming the cell to do whatever it wants it to do. Does that sound similar to like a computer virus? Think about it, right? So a computer virus has to have some way to get into the computer, whether it's on your drive or if you open an email or something like that. And once it gets in, what does it do? It takes your computer over and it starts to tell it what to do, right? That's exactly how these viruses work. I wonder if that's where they got the name. Okay. So let's talk about their genome structure. I kind of touched on this a little bit, but look at all these different um, variations they can have. So you can have double-stranded DNA, single-stranded DNA, double-stranded RNA, or single-stranded RNA. Now most of those should look like something you're like, oh yeah, I guess we've kind of talked about that before, except for this one, double-stranded RNA. That's kind of funky, right? And so we're going to talk about that at a later um, date, or a later video, talking about um, how that works. Okay, so um, what we're going to talk about um, right here are going to be what are called bacteriophages, and those are going to be viruses that go after bacteria. And most of the research on viruses originally was done on these guys just because it's cheap, it's easy, they replicate quickly, um, they can see all sorts of mutations that are happening over quick generations, that type of stuff. So a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about in this chapter is based on research that they've done with bacteriophage um, viruses. So anyway, um, what's interesting is, yes, they're the best understood, right, because we've done all these experiments on them. But what's kind of crazy is that they're the most complex. But think about it. How much longer has bacteria been on this earth than uh, eukaryotic cells? An extra billion and a half years. So they've had a billion and a half years to actually come up with ways to um, combat these bacteriophage viruses going after them. And in turn, the viruses have come up with mutations to deal with them. So they've had that extra time to kind of get really complex. Um, Something that I think is really neat is that some um, phages are very, very powerful. They could wipe out a bacterial colony, but there are bacteria out there that can actually fight back against the virus. So what's going to happen is the virus is going to inject its genome into the cell, and it's going to fuse its DNA with the cell's DNA, and it's going to make the cell start making copies. And so the cell doesn't know any better. But a bacterial cell, some of them, can actually say, wait a minute, that's not even my DNA. What are you doing? And we'll actually use a restriction endonuclease, which you learned about in Bio 111. And it'll actually use that to cut out that weird foreign DNA and get rid of it. How cool is that, right? So they can do that. We can't. But they're looking at maybe we could insert genes from the bacteria that are able to do that, and then we could fight viruses that way. So very, very interesting stuff that they're doing on it. Now, some really creepy things that are going to like ruin your world for you um, are going to be this next little part talking about ways that we have used bacteriophage DNA, um, viruses to help us. Um, one of them is they've actually used them in hospitals to fight antibiotic-resistant infections. If you think about it, you've got an infection that's bacterial, they've used antibiotics and they're not working anymore. The only thing you could do is either cut out that tissue or you could introduce a virus that's designed to go after and kill that bacteria. So they're actually doing that, which I think is really neat. I mean, maybe we wouldn't need antibiotics anymore, something like that. Um, there are ideas of, well, what if they mutate? And that, that is a real concern. So there is pluses and minuses to all this stuff. Um, Another one that's really going to disturb you is if you think about when they are shipping um, chicken carcasses, right? So the chicken that we buy at the store, they don't want any sort of issues with salmonella or anything like that growing on the chicken. So what they'll do is they can actually spray the chicken down with bacteriophage viruses and that will attack that salmonella bacteria and kind of keep it at bay. 
um, until you know a later date so we can actually eat it without getting sick. So some people do not like hearing that. Other people are like, well, that's kind of cool. I mean, whatever. Um, you know, do with that information what you will. Um, okay, so in the next video, we're going to talk about the different cycles that they have. And you'll hear me say life cycle, and that's not really correct because they're not living, but you get the idea. So in the next video, we'll talk about the two cycles they kind of go through.